So reviewing this Xiaomi Amazfit 2 is going to be difficult for me personally, mainly because I'm so lazy and I really don't like to move or exercise that much, which is pretty much what I need to do in order to review this thing properly. So this will be one of the hardest reviews I'll ever have to do just because I have to get up my butt and actually do something with my life. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Z Reviews Tech and to be honest, Xiaomi didn't really release this new smartwatch to a lot of fanfare, the Amazfit 2. I don't think many people knew that there was a new smartwatch out following the Amazfit Pace and the Amazfit Bip. I mean, to be honest, the Amazfit Bip did have quite a bit of advertisements for it. So people knew that it was out right here, the Amazfit Bip. A lot of people knew about this smartwatch over here. And to be honest, this is also my favorite smartwatch from Amazfit. So we'll see if the Amazfit Pace 2 will be able to overtake the Amazfit BIP in terms of quality and just overall usefulness. Wow, that is a very nice presentation. So as you can see, it's a very sparse packaging. You just have the two of, of the, you have the phone in the middle and you have the two cardboards to protect the watch itself. And the watch itself here looks very nice. It's presented in a nice white box, which really contrasts very well to the smartwatch itself. So let's open up the box and see what else th do we have inside apart from the watch. So to take out the watch first, put that aside. And now here we have the charger. And here we have the manual that is in Chinese, so that's pretty useless. Well, there's the uh, Amazfit app, but you can just search that up yourself. There's really no need to um, use this QR code. Yeah, so very sparse packaging. All you have is this, the manual, and the watch itself, and that's it. So let's get more into the watch right now. All right, so let's look at the watch. going to peel this off. First impressions, this is a very big watch. I'm not sure how well it's going to fit on my wrist. Look at my wrist. It's not too big. So this watch is actually not small. It's definitely for, you know, larger people with larger wrists. But let's talk a little bit more about the build quality of the watch. So the band here is rubber. It's TPU rubber and it feels fairly nice. I didn't get the leather version because I don't really like leather. It's not a material that I like very much on watches because it really makes my skin start to itch and swell up. But the watch here itself is very nicely made and very well made as well. So you've got Gorilla Glass on the front, and then you have a nice chromed matte metal um, edge over here. And then as you turn it over, you can see that the body of the watch here is carbon fiber, which is very, very nice. And the uh, watch straps over here are made of rubber. And here you have three buttons, three physical buttons um, that you can press and turn. And we'll see how that works later. And here on the back, you have the heart rate sensor, you have the uh, power pins. And if you can see uh, over here, it says that the watch is five atmospheres water resistant, which is not waterproof. It's a little bit different. You should be able to still go swimming and showering with this smartwatch because five atmospheres is very deep. I think it's, that's like probably like 50 meters deep of a water pressure. But you still have to be careful because five atmospheres means that this watch was tested in a static environment, which means it was dropped in completely still water and drop to 50 meters and test it there. So for example, if you're moving this watch around, even in like uh, water that's like five meters deep and you just move your wrist around really fast, you could hit that five atmospheres pretty fast even though you're not at a 50 meter depth. So you do gotta be careful about that. All right, so here is the watch on my wrist. And to be honest, it is kind of big. It takes up almost my entire wrist. I do have small wrists. Um, so if you do have bigger wrists, then this shouldn't be a problem for you. And you can see how thick it is as well. It's, uh, it's probably at least one centimeter thick or close to that. So if you're not a person who likes big watches or tall watches, then this probably is not the watch for you. Other than that, it does feel very nice. Um, it is a little bit heavy, I will say that. So I think people who don't like heavy watches, you know, like my sisters, then this is not the watch for you. You should probably get the Amazfit BIP, which is very nice and is very light. All right, so I have my Xiaomi Mi Note 3 here that I'm going to install a Maze Fit on, and then we can pair it and test it out to see how the smartwatch works. I actually don't know how to turn the smartwatch on. I probably should have read that user manual. There we go. The top right button turns the smartwatch on. 
So it's currently turning on and you can see the Amazfit logo here. It's a little bit dim because this is a transplective display most likely. So it's difficult to see if you don't have bright light or it's at an angle, which this does seem like it is. So let me try angling that for you. Yeah, I, I don't think you can really see that properly. You can probably dimly see it. There we go. Now, now you should be able to see it. I mean, it should be a little bright, but you should be able to see the smartwatch now. It's currently turning on. And so this animation is actually, I'm pretty sure it's the same as what I have on my Xiaomi Amazfit Pace as well. I don't remember what I had on my BIP on the left, but you know what? It's cool. It's just an animation. All right, so I got to say that turning the watch on took forever. It took almost three minutes for the watch to turn on. So now I got to open the Amazfit app on my phone and then scan that QR code on the watch itself. All right, so to connect the watch, I have to select a new watch in order to connect it. All right, so since I had my Amazfit BIP and the Amazfit Pace paired to the same account, it's asking me if I want to restore my user data and account info to the watch, and I do, so I'm gonna hit that button and hit restore and let it go. So as you can see, the Amazfit Sports 2 is water, sorry, not waterproof, water resistant up to five atmospheres. So you can do quite a few things. Um, you can swim with it. This measures your um, cardiorespiratory fitness. And you can have a lot of timers here for, you know, rich exercise data. So, yeah, so now it's successfully paired and this is only in Chinese. So as you can see there, that there is pretty much asking, are you left or right-handed with green being left? So I'm going to hit left. All right. And now there's some tips for using the hardware keys. There's the middle button for using the, um, for entering the menu. There's the top for selecting, I think, and the bottom for rejecting i don't i actually can't read that off the top of my head because my chinese is actually really bad but yeah let's just look at more tips you know what we can just figure that out as we go because i'm way too lazy to figure out what's here oh wait there's english at the top i'm i'm a huge idiot well, never mind cover screen with your palm to lock it from anywhere on the screen let me try that first let me try unlocking it okay let me cover it did it lock no it did not Try again. Yep, it locked. I can't access the screen until I touch it, which is nice. All right, so I have just finished updating this uh, watch and it took a really long time. It took almost 10 minutes from uh, downloading to um, updating to rebooting the watch. But now that it's on, we can start playing around with the watch itself. So let's go through the app first and see what we have. So first we have activity and the steps that you have in your goal that's 8,000. And I did have my goal set to 8,000 on my previous watches as well. So it's nice to see that Xiaomi's integration with their services is pretty good. And you can go on to 78% battery life. And when you tap here, there are certain options you can do for like the uh, um, personalization. And as you see over here, you can see that you can switch the watch faces. So there's a couple over here. That's the uh, original one. Actually, no, I think this is the original one. But yeah, you can see how it updates instantly over here. There are a couple more watch faces. Um, I don't know if they have the one that I really like here. Uh, they don't have any ones that I really like here, but I'll go back to this one because it, it's the easiest to see in terms of the information it gives you. Now let's go to the app settings. They have sports, weather, and that means listen in Mandarin. So that is most likely to let you listen to Music? I don't know. Similia sound. I have no idea what... Well, I can read them, but I don't know what the point of this is. I'm guessing... So that says music. So from here, I can well, I can listen to all the music tracks from famous people. So let's look at the widget and app management. You can switch around the order of your icons that, that as they show up over here. And here, you can see that there's Mi Home. Now, that tells me that you can might be able to control your Mi Home devices from the watch itself, which would be pretty cool, being able to you know turn off your rice cooker um, from the Mi Home app, that would be pretty sick. So we'll have to see if it works with the integration with the uh, Xiaomi um, speaker. And there's also Alipay, which would be the NFC version for Google um, Android Pay. I don't think Android Pay is, um, su is supported over here, which would be kind of sad because it, this watch does have NFC, so you would be able to um, use the watch to pay. And here there's some screen unlocking options. 
enabling will reduce watch battery life, and I do want to do that. Let's look at the interface of the watch itself. As you turn it on, you can see it light up very slightly. It's a little bit hard to see because it's a transflective display, so the back lighting isn't the strongest. There are a lot more options in this compared to the Amazfit Pace and the Amazfit Bip. So first you have weather, you have your heart rate, you have listening to music, which we'll see how that works. Uh, I think you have to copy stuff over. That's Alipay, which is NFC, um, alarms, compass calibration, timer, which should work pretty well. You have a start, pause. So after this, there's sleep sensing, and this is the Listen app, the Similaya weird thing that you saw on the cell phone, and we'll see if that works later. Mi Home, pretty cool. Something about time, something about time, so I have no idea. Anyway, let's look at what else we have here. So let's go back to the home screen. So yeah, be sure to keep an eye out for a comparison between this and the Amazfit Bip, as well as my full review of the Xiaomi Amazfit Pace. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.